Hey everybody, Bill Sky, the Assembly Guy, and this is going to be our third and last floating point video in this entire series. The first one I did was the X87 floating point coating. The second one was a demonstration of the XMM registers and how those can be used to make coating a lot faster for large pieces of data, specifically for audio and visual content. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about using the XMM registers instead of the X87 ST registers when coding floating point. It's a new way of doing it. There's different syntax. Actually, it's more modern, really, and it doesn't look at the... The XMM registers are not looked upon as a stack as they are 16 actual registers that you can use for floating point operations. So I think it would be a good idea to get started. So I've got a Visual Studio, I'm going to do this in Windows, I've got a Visual Studio project here and I'm just going to start some debugging here because I want to actually show you, for those of you that may not have looked at the MMX video, I want to show you where you can find the MMX registers in your debugger. So what I did was I created a, or I opened a memory and a registers window and the way that you do that is you go up to debug windows and you can select registers and once you do that you, you get this registers tab and right now all we're looking at are the are the um, general purpose registers of the CPU the integer registers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to select MMX and I'm also going to select SSE and the SSE are the real registers that we're talking about here, the XMM registers. Now, each one of these registers is 128 bits in size, separated by two 64s or four 32s or eight 16s or 16 8-bit registers. So you can really do a lot of work with these. And if you look at my previous video on, on how you can automate the processing of large amounts of data with many less lines of code, Go ahead and take a look at that. I have a demonstration of how you can do that. But in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can actually use these registers to actually do floating point operations one at a time like you did the x87 registers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some, some floating point variables. Um, let's just go ahead and do some... some uh, double precision floating point numbers. So I'm going to say uh, double float and I'm going to call it define, oh, let's say define quad and I'm going to give it a value of 1.0. Now when you do this, 1.0 is encoded as a floating point number. If you haven't seen that video, go to back, to go two videos back as to how it's encoded in, in IEEE 754 notation. But you can do it this way or you can do it this way in Windows. It doesn't matter. It means the same thing. I like to do things uh, that are compatible across operating systems, and real 8 is not compatible. Now, I'm not going to go through a bunch of the stuff that I did in the x87 video, because you should go back and take a look at that, because you have to deal with both of these. A lot of programmers still do that. A lot of them still use the x87 stuff. But what this 1.0 does, and I'm going to get rid of that real 8. What that 1.0 does is it tells the assembler put the number 1.0 in IEEE 754 notation so we can start um, so we can start doing actual floating point work within the FPU. Now the other thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure you back up the FPU. I'm going to leave that to the x87 video. So go ahead and take that and you back up the FPU before you start doing your calculations and then you go ahead and restore that when you're done. Okay. So I've got a quad here, and what I'm going to do is I would like to actually put some data into the floating point unit uh, using the XMM registers. So what I'll do here is I'm going to say move scalar double precision. So that's what move SD stands for. And I'm going to say put that in the XMM zero register. Uh, remember we did a load R for x87, but for the SSE registers, which are the XMM N registers, uh, you say move SD, and then I'm going to put a square brackets, and I'm going to say double float. So that should actually put that in, now, that should actually put that in there. Now, 
I didn't, I'm, I'm not having to load it. Oh, what happened here? Uh, Visual Studio is giving me a little problem. Not sure I can end it. Oh, that's because it's it's currently running. So I'm going to say stop debugging and build it. Oh, sorry, I was debugging it, and then I made a change. Okay, so now let's go ahead and debug it. Okay, so there's our no-op, so I'm going to step out. Okay, that's our welcome message, so let's go ahead and, and do that, and I'm going to put a breakpoint there and click continue. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this register right here. I'm going to move into XMM0, the double float. I step over, and there it is. So there's the double float. Now notice that only the lower portion, the lower 64 bits, has a value in it because the upper 64 bits is really not usable by you as a general floating point user. Again, if you're, if you're processing a whole lot of data where you're going to be filling it up, uh, you can do that, but in general, you don't do that. Okay, so we've got the data in there. Now, unfortunately, on the Windows debugger, I can't really look at this as a floating point value. So what I do a lot of is I'll create a variable and I can look at the variable, I can look at the memory location as a floating point value. And we'll be doing that as well. Okay, so that got in there. Now let's go ahead and do, uh, let, let's actually put an integer in that re in another register. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an integer called double int, and I'm just gonna make that 100. And let's go ahead and change our double float to something more interesting so we can see that it's a float. Okay, so how am I going to put that into a, a floating point register? Well, there's another statement that I can use. And that one is a convert SI2SD, I believe, XMM1. And that's going to be double int. So what that's going to do is that's going to convert an integer to a scalar double precision floating point number. Let's go ahead and save and build that. So all we're doing is loading data in. Oh, I think I got that one wrong. Uh, let me make sure I've got that. Uh, it should be CV, CVT. Oh, I type, typed it in wrong. It should C, be CVT, not CVS. So CVTS. I2. All right, let's try that. And at least they tried to make the statements acronyms. Okay, so that's going to move an integer in there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call this uh, temp float. And I'm going to put a question mark there, which means it's, it's not initialized to any value. It just allocates the data. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to copy the data back so we can then look at this as a floating point number because unfortunately the debugger won't let us do that. So after I move the x and the double float in x and I'm going to say move sd into temp float xmm0. So we're going to be able to look at that in memory and now I'm going to move sd into temp float xmm1. Now, how can I move an integer into a floating point variable? Well, this converts it. The cvtsi2sd converts it from an integer to a scalar uh, double precision floating point number, so it actually is a floating point number when we put it back into, into temp float. So let's go ahead and build that. And it built just fine. Now let's debug it. So we can actually start seeing some, some data in memory. Okay, so I'm going to go into memory and I'm going to put ampersand temp float. And I want to right click on that. And it is a 4 byte integer. Actually, no, it's an 8 byte integer, so let's do that. And then I'm going to right click on it and say 64 bit floating point. So there we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move double float from memory into XMM0. And then I'm going to, oh, nope, that, I'm sorry, I'm still doing the welcome. So let's go ahead and continue. And now I'm going to copy it from memory into the XMM0. And then I'm going to copy the XMM0 into temp float. And you can see there's our 
So we were able to take it out of memory, put it in the floating point unit, and then copy it back to memory so you can see that the copy worked, the move worked. Now let's take the XM, let's take the double int and put that in XM1. Now the double int, if you remember, or the, yeah, the double int was an integer value of 100, so it converts it to a floating point, puts it in XMM1. Now I'm going to move XMM1 or copy it into temp float, and you can see that we have 100. So we were able to move a floating point number into a, a floating point register, and we were also able to move a, or copy a, an integer a variable into a floating point register and vice versa. Now these are for quads. What if you've got single precision? A single float to find double 234.56. And let's say you've got a single int to find double, uh, let's just say 99. Well, how would you do those? Well, those are actually pretty simple. Instead of the D, you would put an S. So that stands for single precision. So if we come over here and we say single float, and we're going to put an S here, temp float. Now temp float is a double precision, so we're going to say temp float 2, and we're going to say temp float 2 to find double question mark. And that should build just fine. So that's how you do things smaller. It's a little bit different. In an in integer, you would specify a size, right? You would say this is going to be a word. But in the SSE, um, actually, let me make absolutely sure I've got that right. I don't want to tell you something wrong. I believe it is SSE. So let's go to Windows. Oh, nope, let's run it. I want to make sure I've got that right, because there's so many acronyms here. So yes, it is the SSE set of registers. That's what the XMM are. So I'm going to step over. Oh, let's go ahead and continue that. Now I'm going to move the single precision, single float, and I'm going to move that back out into memory. And if we go to memory, and I see ampersand temp float 2, and we have to right click on that and say 32 bit floating point, and there's our 234.5. 5, 6, actually. So you can go between double precision and single precision by just changing the D to an S for double to single, or the S to a D for double precision. So that's all we've done there is talk about how do we actually move data in and out of the out of the XMM registers, the SSE registers. And let's go ahead and change all this to double to get back. So I demonstrated how to do that. Let's go ahead and build this, make sure I didn't type in something wrong. OK. So how do we actually add two numbers together? Well, it's a lot different in the SSE registers, again, which are the XMM registers. And I think it's simpler. So if I want to add two double precision uh, floating point numbers in the floating point in the SSE registers of the FPU, I simply say add scalar D, and I want to add, uh, let's say, XMM0 and XMM1. So that's going to add XMM1 to XMM0. Uh, you can also do another thing. You could say uh, uh, V, I guess, stands for variable, the variable number of of, of uh, registers you're going to be used, I can say v add sd xmm0 from xmm0 xmm1. Now this is a lot like ARM programming when you do addition. And what this is, this is a three argument add, and this is a two argument add. The two argument add means copy or add xmm1 to xmm0. The three argument add, this begins with a v, says add XMM1 and XMM0, and let's put that in, in, in XMM3. A little bit, I, I think it's a quite a bit more um, flexible than the x87 FPU coding, and it's more like ARM, so they're kind of getting closer, I guess. So let's go ahead and debug this now. We can actually see this happening. Uh, we're going to go to registers. And I'm going to go down to these ads. Let's go ahead and continue it. Okay, 
So, well, unfortunately, again, we can't see the ads because we have to convert it and there's no way in the debugger to look at these as floating. Well, even if I right click on it and I click on floating point, it's not really showing the floating point registers. So we could debug this as much as we want. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then move. So I'm going to say move SD into temp float. XMM0 so we can see the result of our addition. But what is all this going on here? There we go. So we want to see the result of that addition, and I'm going to go ahead and copy it there so we can see it again. And instead of XMM0, we're going to copy over XMM3 to see what the result is. It's a little bit more inconvenient than the debugger. Um, I haven't actually tried all of this in Linux. Actually, I have tried it in Linux, but the debugger, you can actually see the floating point values a lot better in the Linux debugger, but the register names start with a Y instead of an X. I'm not sure why. Excuse the pun. Okay, so I'm going to add those together. Now let's take a look in memory. I'm going to put ampersand and float. Okay, right now it's got a zero in it. Let's go ahead and step over, and now let's put that addition of XMM1 and XMM0. Oh, a little bit of an issue here. I wonder what's going on here. Um, let's go back to the registers. And we definitely do have something here. Are we looking at temp float? Ah, we were looking at temp float too. Okay, so let's start this over again. And let's look at temp float. Okay, right now temp float looks like it's got zero in it. So we're going to add XMM1 and XMM0. And then we're going to copy that into temp float. And we've got a pretty large number there. I'm going to have to double check, check that to make sure it's right. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Let's go ahead and do that right now. So we've got uh, one, two, three. So let's go ahead and move double float into XMM0. Uh, let's do that again. So let's copy uh, double float into both XMM0 and XMM1. Let's add those two together using the add scalar double. And then we're going to move the scalar double into temp float. So we should have one, two, three point four five twice so that should be like 246.90 I believe so let's see if that works we just have some data issues there okay all right so let's watch this go on up oh, nope yeah we've got an issue here I think it might have something to do with Hmm, let's see about this one right here. Let's say if we add those two together, if we still get some funny numbers. Yeah, we're getting some funny numbers here, so I think the best thing to do is as we move the data in, let's say move SD and float. Could it be that it's, no, nope, the size is correct. So temp float, XMM0 so we can view it. XMM1 so we could view it. So let's take a look and see if we actually... Okay. Ampersand temp float. Okay, so it's got a funny number in it. Ah, it's, yep, I didn't put a breakpoint where I needed to put it. So let's restart. Okay, so we're going to move into XMM0, the double float. Now, where's the double float? It's 123.45. Okay, let's step over. We're going to put that into temp float. Oh, we have an issue here. So what's going on? Yeah, it was working before. Now, all of a sudden, we've got some funny... Oh, I know why. We're working with 64-bit. There we go. Whew, you got to make sure you got your debugger right. Okay, so we moved 123.45 in there. Now we're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5 into XM1, XMM1. There it is. It looks good. Now we're going to add XMM1 to XMM0. Then we're going to copy it there. There's our 246.90. 
Now we're going to add XMM1 to XMM0. We're going to put it in XMM3. So let's step over, step over, and there we go. So there's a 3 set 70.35. All right, great. So that's how you can you, that's how you can do addition. You can also do subtraction exactly the same way. So if I go over here to my notes, subtraction is exactly the same thing. Um, and again, I really like these subtract. I really like these additions and subtractions so, because they're so much easier to do. I can say subtract SD XMM zero. So th what this will do is this will subtract. The destination actually it'll subtract the destination from the source. So here's so it'll subtract x m m zero from x m m one. So it'll be x m m zero is equal to x m m zero minus x m m one. So that may not be what you want. So you might want to do something like this: x m m zero is equal to uh, x m m one. Oh, that's not how you do it. What am I doing? So track x m m zero. I might want to do the, and it is the v sub s d, and I want to put that in x m m three, and it's going to be x m m one from x m m zero. So that's going to subtract. So the way that it is is that this is the destination. This is the. Uh, what's the top of the subtraction? Subtrahend, I think. Uh, so that's going to be the. Subtract XMM0 from XMM1 and place into XMM3. So that's what that's going to do. So let's go ahead and test that out. Oh, now we're going to want to print it. So I'm going to copy this down to there. And we're going to look at XMM3. And let's put a breakpoint right here. And we're going to take a look at, there's our temp float. So we're going to take XMM0, subtract it, or no, we're going to take XMM1, subtract it from XMM0 and put it in XMM3. And then we're going to put XMM3 in there. And yep, that looks about right. It's 123. Now, I believe it's a negative 123 because we had those flipped around. So if we go ahead and we put zero here, and we put one there, let's see what we get. We should probably get a positive 123. <clears throat> and we do get a positive 123. So it subtracted XMM1 from XMM0, and then put that into XMM3. So that is subtraction. That's addition and subtraction. You can also do the same thing with multiplication. So I can say at v mol sd x m m three multiply x m m zero times x m m one. So that's a multiplication. And again, because of the problems with the debugger in Windows, you might have to print that out. So that's subtraction or that's multiplication. Then you also have division. So what I can do is I can say the v div sd, and that's going to be our dex destination, and x m m zero will be divided by x m m one. So you can put some comments here, right? You can say x m m three equals x m m zero divided by x m m one. Same here, x m m three equals x m m zero times x m m one. So you can put your comments there to keep it straight as to what you're doing. And I really recommend that you go through and move that into a variable and take a look at it. Even try this in Linux, because I think the bugger, but just look for the YMM registers instead of the XMM. Again, I don't know why that why that's there. Now, one other thing about the XMM registers, the SSE registers, is that they don't have any trigonometric functions like the X, X, X87 floating point did. However, it does have functions like, uh, what is it, a square root? Your square root SD. So give me the square root of the double precision XMM3. Or let's say, oh, how do we want to do this? Uh, let's put it in XMM3. What this will do is this will give us the XMM3 equals, oh, 
x m and 3 equals the square root of x m and 0. Again, this is a great place to put comments to keep things uh, straight. Also, there's a reciprocal. I could say reciprocal PSD. The reciprocal put in an x m m 3 of x m m 1. So this will be x m m 3 equals 1 over x m m 0. So that's what that'll do. So we've got square root reciprocal. Um, if it's a single precision, just put an s there instead. And now you've got single precision. So that's doing simple math in the new registers for the FPU. Now, one thing that's really nice about the new FPU registers, the SSC registers, is comparisons. So how do you compare? Um, now, the neat thing about the XMM registers, the SSC registers, is you don't have to copy the flags over to the CPUs. You can just do it. So, like, for instance, let's say we wanted to see, if I wanted to see, I want to say un, unsigned compare of, of uh, unsigned compare scalar double of XMM3, XMM0, and then I don't have to do those FNSTW, or I don't have to do an FCOM I, I just do this, and then I can say jump is greater than. So if x m m three actually I think don't jump if above if it's signed. So jump if x m m three is greater than x m m zero. Jump if x m m three is less than x m m zero. So the it's it's really really easy to use these registers now um, with comparisons much more so than it was in the x eighty seven seven FPU. And then we still have the issue with mixed conditions. Uh, I should say mixed arithmetic values or ex mixed integer and floating point. If you're going to be sending data an integer value like we did earlier, if you're going to be sending that to the FPU, make absolutely sure that that is completed before you do any FPU functions. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we've got the single int. Let's, let's use the double int. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say CVTSI to SD. So that's convert a scalar integer to a scalar double floating point. Put that in XM1, and I believe it was double int. So I want to copy that integer into the floating point unit. But if I then say increment, double int, how do we know that this is done before we increment double int? And I talked about this in the x87 lecture. What you do want to do here is you want to say f wait. So you want to wait to make sure that the FPU is ready, that the FPU got that double int before you did anything. And let me go ahead and just delete that so we can assemble this. Wait until the copy into the FPU is complete. So it's really important to do that. And it's not int, it's inc. It should be increment. Okay, so to fix this problem, I'm going to change the DQ to Q word. For some reason, increment and decrement, it doesn't work if you don't use the, the Windows, uh, I guess, keyword of keyword. If I said define quad, and then I come down here and I say increment double int, let's see what happens. Okay, it works. So you can't say increment keyword like you would have to do in Linux, double int, because you'll get a syntax error. So another example of where Windows is a little bit different. Now the other thing I do can do here, I could put keyword, and then I can get rid of the keyword down here. So a little bit of a difference in the assembler. So just as a summary, what's going to happen here is I'm going to say convert the integer at double int into a floating point and put it into XMM1. If I don't have the F weight, if this statement hasn't been completed yet, this statement is still going to execute because the increment happens in the CPU, not the FPU. So you want to put an F weight there to make absolutely sure that the conversion has occurred first, and then you can affect 
the integer value in memory. Now, I have, this has happened very often to me, very rare. I very rare have ever had this situation. But if you notice that your data is not quite right, you're doing floating point and integer mixed arithmetic, that might be the problem, is that you're not waiting for the FPU to complete its task. Okay, so that's the end of our MMX discussion, um, or I'm sorry, MMX, I keep saying that, XMM. If you want to learn more about that, just do a Google search on FPU, SSE registers, and there's all kinds of information out there. I could probably teach an entire semester on just that one subject. But as a professional programmer, you should go out and learn that stuff on your own. This is a way to get you started. A lot of good information here. Hope to see you at our next video.